people of the Coachella Valley and surrounding communities. The KESQ TV News 11 o'clock report. Greater Palm Springs most trusted and most watched late local news. With Christy Pedalty, Sports Director Cal Ehlers, and Bill Hessen with the weather. Good evening, everyone. I'm Christy Pedalty. Phil Blower has the evening off. Rescue teams are trying to find a Palm Springs man missing in Tuckwitz Canyon at this hour, but two friends who were with him overnight in the mountains have been found uninjured. 44-year-old Laurent Ponce and two Huntington Beach residents set out on a hike Thursday afternoon. If you're looking for a few laughs at the movies this weekend, you might want to see the film Crazy People. It features Dudley, Han Dudley Moore rather, and Daryl Hannah. Here is a Joe Lovett review. One of the possible four. The ad campaigns have caused a little controversy for yeah, that film. I'll bet he never wrote a commercial. Yeah, really. Well, we are going to leave you with a recent performance by the Los Angeles Philharmonic Orchestra at the McCallum. Have a great weekend, everyone. The valley, 45 mile per hour gusts down trees, closed some roads by literally covering them with sand. Workers in several valley cities had to pull out their tractors to clear the streets. Homes along Landau Boulevard and Cathedral City were partially buried in sand drifts from nearby empty lots. A traveler's advisory was in effect for I-10 from Cathedral City to Banning on Highway 111 at Windy Point and Highways 62, 86, and 74. Bill Hessen will be along in just a few moments to tell us if the quiet is just before another storm. Well, windy conditions didn't have much effect on Highway 111 in downtown Palm Springs, but the city council may make some changes there that could change the area. KESQ's Mark Sayer has our story. Hello, Katie Anna. I'm Chris Pedalty. I'm a reporter here at Channel 10. And this is Mariah. She's a year and a half old, just a baby. We both want to wish you a very Merry Christmas. Shake. Good girl. And now, Chuck Kittner and Chris Pedalty with the news. Gail Lynn with the weather. And Rex Moore with sports. From the heart of Acadiana, this is TV 10 Eyewitness News. No, you are not seeing things. That is snow falling in South Louisiana. Hello, Acadiana. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Chuck Hugner. And I'm Chris Peddledy. The pictures you see here were taken yesterday morning by members of the Urbanac family outside their home in Broussard. It didn't go on for long, but it was pretty to all just the same. The question is now is how much longer or are we going to see any more of this weather this coming weekend? Well, thanks a lot. Well, one group of guys that didn't have to worry about the weather today was USL Round Ballers, right? That's right. They were in action tonight, and Rex Moore is going to be along in just a minute with all the highlights. Stay tuned. Of course, NFL playoff action today, but we're starting with USL basketball. That's right. They hosted Nichols State, and uh, I'll tell you what, it was a wild one in the Cage Dome tonight. The CBS movie will not be seen tonight, so that we may bring you the following very special presentation. Chris Pedalty joins us now with a look at Channel 2's local daytime programming. Chris? Dave, the programs help the area's homemakers learn how to cook, how to sew, basically how to raise their families. They kept Eastern Iowans in shape, too. First, every day from 1 until 1.30 in the afternoon, women sat down in front of the television to watch Home Fair. The half-hour show debuted on September 28, 1954. The hostess, Marguerite Ashlock. For 30 minutes every day, Marguerite entertained audiences with recipes and interviews for the homemaker. The show appeared live each day from a kitchen. Some folks may remember other shows we pioneered here at Channel 2. So many of them have either gotten lost, or as is the case with as many of the live shows, they weren't recorded because it was simply too expensive to do so. I think, Chris, that every station in the country had a homemaker program 30 or 40 years ago, but uh, probably hardly any do now. That's very true. We were dealing with a different lifestyle at that point in our lives 30, 40 years ago. Many women have left the home today, so the shows aren't there because they're not at home. But on midday today, we have the news, we have the weather, the agriculture reports. We also have a very informational show, though, lots of experts and guests providing their expertise to a very diverse, intelligent audience. Some of the same content, anyway. Exactly. Okay, Chris, thank you. Welcome back to News Channel 2. This morning, it is a cool 37 degrees at Broadcast Park at 615. Did and I I'm mention the guy that it's cool outside? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have uh, colder weather out there this morning. We talked about that yesterday, the mm -hmm. big change on the way. And as you stick your nose outside, you're going to notice it today. Here 
Wade Wagner's in now. Farmers can get out again today. It's going to be a great day for them. Yeah, yeah nice, feel? cool, crisp bottom day, it looks like. Lots of sun. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet, though, have we? <laughs> saw a lot of stars coming in. Yeah. Well, good morning, everybody. And now it's time to visit with our next door neighbor, Tim Boyle at WMT FM. Good it's morning, that. Tim. Hi, guys. How are you today? What's going on How over doing? there? Well, I tell you, we have a major unveiling here. Uh, of course, everyone's still worried about the Iowa football season, but uh -huh. it's not too soon to be thinking about basketball. Okay. And this, this is an exclusive here on Channel 2, the unveiling of our new Cedar Rapids bus sign with help of my friend Ron Gonderoff. You ready, Ron? Let's see if we can show it or give some idea of what you'll be seeing on the buses. <laughs> Poof. I, I, you probably can't get a very good P. look at it. Uh, hey, no, <laughs> that, that's <laughs> great, Tim. Here, here. Maybe you ought to turn it around right here. Let's try this. <laughs> Well, OPS. Oh, hey, green. we're making progress. It's, it's green. It says hoops are here. Let's oh, hoops. Around. Hoops are us is what it says. It's rather unwieldy, as you can tell. Here, Ron, grab that end. Maybe oh, we can get, get the okay, business there you end go. of it in here. There we go. <laughs> Sell that logo. And that's the, the important line. part. You that's, bet. That's uh, WMT AM 600, there. home of <laughs> Iowa basketball again this year. Who put you after Ron, that? Ron and Carl Gunder. <laughs> so that'll be on every darn bus you see. Maybe even that electric bus. Here, Ron. Uh, say hi to. Oh, hey, Ron. Hi, Ron. Hi, Ron. There's Ron. Yeah. <laughs> We're number one. Get it. There you go. Hi, You guys are getting out of hand over there. All right. There we go. You're out of hand. You're out of hand this morning. Ronnie Gonder, ladies and gentlemen. Tomorrow. Well, Ron, it's the John 316 sign, okay? <laughs> we can get that in here. <laughs> Gonna so. need a crane, guys. Yeah, probably so. As you can tell, the format for the bus is a little different from the one for <laughs> TV. Okay. One of the officers killed, John Gibson, was a relative of Boston Representative Joe Moakley. Gibson was married to Moakley's niece. Despite the tragedy, Moakley wants to keep Capitol Hill as open as possible. Back home, no surprises at today's Republican convention in Hartford. Governor John Rowland did what everybody knew he was going to do. He accepted his party's nomination for a second term. Tom Mischick reports on the official start of the campaign. They were dancing in the aisles at the state GOP convention. And Ms. Chuck Fox, 61 News at 10. Now, the governor also says he wants tougher DWI laws and virtually guaranteed the death penalty for child killers. A cross burning in one Connecticut town is being investigated as a possible hate crime tonight. Police are looking for two white teenage girls as suspects. One was reportedly seen carrying the cross into the Five field. Years. Or you can ask for one big lump sum, which is the way I chose to go. We're live in Hartford. I'm Wei Wong, Fox 61, News at 10. That's a popular way to go these days, thanks. And of course, the drawing right here on Channel 61 in about 50 minutes. Well, what are the odds of, of uh, some more great temperatures and low humidity levels? Pretty good combination today, Michael Friedman. That's right, Chris. Far late this upcoming week, but it looks like a fantastic day tomorrow mm. to wrap a great weekend. Well, as a person who doesn't have air conditioning mm -hmm. in the house, this is welcome news. It sure is. Thank you, Michael. Okay. Up next on the News at 10, Tony Terzi takes... Impaired, <laughs> not that you are baseball impaired or anybody is, but a single, double, a triple, and a homer in the same game is the cycle. And that's never happened to me in my entire career, let alone the same <laughs> game. Well, you and a lot of other people, that's Tony. True. Thanks a lot. Okay. Finally tonight, nothing like Brazilian jazz to heat up a hot summer night in Connecticut. Thousands of people filling New Haven's Town Green to hear Eliane Elias, a singer and pianist known in the world of Latin jazz. Tonight's concert is the second in a three-part series of free concerts held on the Town Green this summer. Perfect day to do it. That's going to do it for us, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Stay tuned for Powerball in 30 minutes. Have a good night. Thank you.